You are currently looking at one of the stranger musical controlling devices of the 90s. Around 1994 this came out. Um, some people have said it could be 1995 because of the number, the phone number on there, the 01 didn't start till 95. However, Music Tech Magazine actually spoke about it in 1994. So, phew. History is history. Regardless, it's around that time. This is the Dawson's MIDI Creator. So I got hold of this on Facebook Marketplace a couple of weeks ago. It's a gesture control device that sends MIDI signals out. If you're not sure what MIDI is, MIDI is a universal talking language to musical instruments that accept MIDI. If you have a computer or a keyboard or something like that that has one of these on the back, then you can pretty much plug it into anything else that has one of these. They talk to each other and they can control each other. The only real information I could find was in this magazine article from Music Tech in 1994. The link is below if you're interested. It basically says about everything. I haven't got instructions or anything so I'm running off what is said in here. But it's basically an ultrasonic device that you kind of gesture towards to sort of play the music. It was designed for kind of accessibility of musical instruments uh, for, for the disabled and stuff to be able to play musical instruments with this funky little thing. This part right here is the MIDI creator. It's the brains. It's got 14 inputs on the front. It's got three MIDI connectors on the back, one in, one out, one through, and then it's got two power sockets on the back as well. And this is the gesture device. You can see it's got a massive ultrasonic sensor on the front. You recognize those from kind of depth controls on autofocuses on things like Polaroid cameras and stuff like that of a similar time. When you put these together, plug them into a musical instrument and you're able to play stuff. The device that I got also came with three extra sensors. They look slightly different. They're these little ominous boxes. They plug in in exactly the same way as this. But these are more like capacitive touch sort of thingamajiggies. I'll show you what the sensor looks like on the inside. They're quite nice. It makes me sort of want to build a few more of these to uh, be able to have more expression. They're pretty much just a capacitive sensor. As you can see, there's a big old chunky bit of copper there that will sense it all and then it all gets amplified by all this malarkey. First off, let's plug the MIDI creator into the power, like so. It's not, not turning on. Oh, it's not plugged in. As you can see when it turns on, it has a number. It has a number of modes, eight modes in total. A few of them are very similar, but it means that you can play chords and arpeggios the further you go away or closer you get to. The 14 different inputs, for instance, can be used as different chords in arpeggiators. We're gonna try that first, actually. So plug in these into the inputs at the front. Oh man, let's do I'm gonna stop talking, I'll just show you it. this in to talk to this controller. So what we're going to do is we've got this MIDI cable, it's plugged into the synthesizer over here which is a Profit 6, so the MIDI in on that, MIDI out on this one. So as far as I understand from the magazine entry, mode 4 means that different inputs are different chords and the closer you get to the sensor the different note is played in the chord. So now let's have a go with the actual ultrasonic sensor. This one actually has two wires coming out of it. The first one is power, so you plug that into the power output of this. Amazingly enough, both of these in 1994 would have set you back. This one was £199, including that, and this was £250. And below, that's what it would be nowadays, taking into account of inflation. So not particularly cheap, but it's a specialised device. So when you put this to your ear, you can actually hear clicks. 
the clicks are being sent out and then it's listening to them bouncing back from things and then taking the change and fluctuations and then turning those into voltages which then go into here. It's a little bit hard to test this here in my garage. So we're gonna take this over to the museum and there's a bit more space so I'll see you over there. Toodle doo. First let's try and plug it into the nervous squirrels owl organ shall we? In fact I've started it right now, let's give it a go. So as you can tell with the ultrasonic sensor, it's a little bit hard to make musical purely because there's a slight bit of lag in there that you can't quite kind of play it. It's all just a little bit, little bit difficult, but that doesn't mean that we can't make use of it because in the end of the day, it is obsolete and this museum is not obsolete. So you make obsolete things not obsolete by bringing them back into non-obsolescence, right? And I've got the perfect plan for this. Both of these types of sensors don't require you to touch them. So they're reasonably hygienic. So this little antiquated machine is actually gonna be perfect to have in the museum toilet. This is the first time you're gonna see the toilet. I've got to be honest, it is the most boring boringest, most blandest room in the whole museum. As you can tell, I was like, oh, I haven't got time to paint this. Oh, I'll do it something with it sometime. I'll just plonk some schematics on the side and shove a coffin in the corner. Of course, there is a phone in the toilet, which doesn't get me its use, which is understandable. And the plan is to put the wireless sensor somewhere around here. Also with a note saying it's not a camera because it's definitely not a camera. That'll be a bit sketchy. And yeah, but first we need to build a few tiny bits of electronics. Here we have everything that's gonna let us hook it all up into the museum toilet. So this is the sound making part of it. We've got a WAV trigger. In the wave trigger, we have an SD card. What I did was I recorded all of the notes on a nice sound on the Sequential Circuits Profit 600. I then formatted all of those notes and put them onto this SD card. You can actually download the instrument that's on here. All you have to do is drag and drop all of the files onto an SD card and it'll turn your wave trigger into a plug and play Profit sounding device. Next to it is a basic DIY MIDI interface. It's just an opto isolator. There's also a how to of how to do this on the WAV trigger website. So there's a link below to that as well. So it's going MIDI out of the MIDI creator into the interface that is then talking to the WAV trigger. After that, it's going out of a speaker cable into this rather dodgy amplifier that I had sitting around and that is bolted there. And then out of that, whoo, over to this speaker that is gonna be bolted to the wall. This is then all gonna sit inside an enclosure on the wall and then that's gonna get covered over and this is gonna sit on the front like so. This is gonna be outside of a toilet and connected to the other sensors so you can read about it and play with the sensors. But then when you walk into the toilet, this is gonna be sitting in there. I freely printed this mount so we could actually connect it into the corner so it sits at an angle and then looks over at the toilet. All of this together is gonna to make the toilet a little bit musical. I have another project coming up in a week or two to make it even more musical. We're gonna actually, uh, well, I'm not gonna give it away. We're gonna look at a video of that later, but this is just the introduction into what is to come if you go into the toilet at this museum's not obsolete. Anyway, let's get this all bolted onto the wall. I started drilling the enclosure into the wall and then putting the electronics in then drilling a hole, yeah. And then putting the screw in and dangling the pencil through with the wire for the speaker, yeah. Then putting the trunk down and bolting it down and testing the wave trigger till it works just perfectly. Then put the digester device into the bathroom and drill a hole in it And then put the wire back through with a pencil, yeah For some reason I forgot to shoot the rest of it But let's look at it now I'm so sorry for that theme tune, it's all that came out, that was absolutely awful There's some trunking on there as well, I ended up uh, having to set it all up in a bit of a rush Because I did start putting this down about an hour before the museum had to open So it's a little bit sketch it's 
pretty funny because when you use them out here, well, it's pretty loud in the bathroom. So whoever's in the bathroom gets to hear your beautiful playing. As for the bathroom, we're gonna shut the door. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's a bit of fun, but like I said, there's gonna be more projects with the toilet. We'll just, just keep, hold your horses. Uh, actually, I found out that there is a good 50 centimeters of dead space behind that, so maybe there's an idea there as well, but I'm blabbing now. The museum has been open for the last two days and it has been running. I haven't got any footage of it, and understandably so, you wouldn't wanna be filming people in the toilet. Like I said, I did add a little bit of a note above it saying it's not a camera, I can't see you having a wee smiley face. So that's it for today. If you ever want to have a wee wee in here, well you can. It's open pretty much every weekend. Check the website for all opening times. The links are below. You can download a bunch of samples and sounds of the arpeggios which you can use for yourself as well as a WAV trigger instrument file of the Prophet. Those are both available over on Patreon. So if you want to support this endeavor, the museum and all this malarkey, then go and check it out over there. Anyway, I've been looking at my no computer. That's the Dawson MIDI creator. And yeah, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it. And I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a wee wee. I started drilling the enclosure into the wall Then putting the electronics in and drilling a hole, yeah and Then putting the screw in and dangling the pencil through with the wire for the speaker, yeah Then putting the trunk down and balling it down And testing the wire trigger till it works just perfectly, yeah Then put the digestive device into the bathroom and drill a hole in it and then put the wire back through with a pencil, yeah.